creativity comes out of conflict and comes out it of it feelings does. that are, you know, as passionate as, you know, guilt and responsibility and being mm -hmm. torn. So, and we'll talk about how being either a parent or a housewife hinders creativity mm -hmm. or promotes it. So whether you're married or partnered up what or you, have a boss yeah, or have a Yeah, what do you have to get permission yeah, from exactly. to do what you do? But right now, let's just talk about the housewives. <laughs> Creative Happy Hour, Woo! where we get drunk on the creative possibilities. Oh, yes, we do. Welcome back. Yes. Today, oh, and Fiona, Fiona is says here. hello. Fiona says hi. Here she is, the third hostess, and she stinks today, which is awesome. Uh oh, nothing's perfect. We can never I don't be just, perfect. Just oh, drink more, and then she's you like, won't smell it. Yeah, she's smelling the drink. It smells really good. It's yeah. <laughs> so what are we drinking today? We are drinking Daddy Diablo. Daddy Diablo. And we picked Daddy Diablo the way we pick many drinks, which is for the name, yeah. but also because of where it is served. Yes. And I have a rare creature in the studio today. I don't mean Fiona, who's like scratching Micah's lap right now. Um, and by the way, this is Micah Black. I'm Karen Akavane. Yeah. We just feel like we know you and you know us, so it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, you kind of know us. Huh? Yeah, but I have this rare creature, which is someone who has never before ever watched The Real House. Not even one time. Not even once. And I'm not even... She doesn't Pretending. care. And in fact, I don't care. Yeah. I'm clueless. She usually does her research, but I was like, no, don't do your research. Don't do the research. I'm going to explain this to you. And I just want to see the shock and awe. So first of all, so Daddy Diablo is a drink that is served in Lisa Vanderpump. Uh, Lisa Vanderpump being one of the Beverly Hills housewives. And mm -hmm. I will explain to you the whole entire franchise yeah. in a minute. But it's served in one of Lisa Vanderpump's many bars she and restaurants. She has like 36. 36. Yes, she does. Yes. Yes. So um, it's served at Tom Tom, which is her newest one in West Hollywood. Okay. Collaboration with two young guys. So she's brought in this infusion of youth mm -hmm. and coolness and hipness. And so this is called the Daddy Diablo. So you mix this for us today. So cheers yes. again. We're going to taste it. Oh, and time it time is a bunch of stuff mm -hmm, in this drink mm -hmm. that makes it fantastic. Mm. It is really, it's, it is, it's yummy. Yes. It's, it's, it's a yummy, yummy mm. drink. So, okay. Obviously you can tell that we have a slice of lime, which is because we put lime in here, but that's not the most interesting ingredient. All right. Well, let's start with the alcohol, I guess. That's yeah. So <laughs> the alcohol is, uh, tequila, tequila and creme de cassis and creme de cassis. Mm -hmm. And which I love, I want to yeah. put it on vanilla ice cream. It's after, on everything. Yeah. yeah. I just want to exactly. put it yeah, everywhere. We were, we, when we were making this, we're like, oh, I don't know if we're going to finish this. And now we're like, oh, this is really nice. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's got, um, fresh ginger. Yes. So fresh, fresh ginger, fresh lime, fresh lime. It has ginger, uh, liqueur, ginger liqueur. Yes. It, Fiona really wants to be on film with um, us. Ginger liqueur. Uh, ginger beer. Ginger beer. Yeah, lots of... And thyme. And thyme. And then... Fresh the, thyme. Fresh thyme, mm -hmm. which is something that... Yeah, and we're talking about Desperate Housewives because... And the real housewives because thyme is something that housewives don't often have a time... You know, they don't have a lot of mm -hmm. in terms of doing creative things. But... And also, there was the interesting ingredient called... The, oh, the Szechuan button. The Szechuan button, which is also called a buzz button. It's a buzz button. Yeah. Or, yes. <laughs> or like, oh. Everybody well, has a buzz button. Exactly. Come on. Exactly. Be honest. It's also called the electric daisy. And I was like, wait, that oh. sounds familiar. And then I realized I was cooler than that I thought I was. That was your band name in <laughs> yeah, 1995. Like, exactly. No, I found out. I was one a, of the electric daisies too. Right? Exactly. We all were. And um, it's it's an electric uh, electronic music festival mm. that's kind of in all these cool places. And it incorporates like this cool LED art and 3D constructs. Oh, so like, yeah. Ooh, nice. So this drink okay. goes with it. It goes with it really well. I mean, this is a really, really tasty drink. So... I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the buzz button in a second, but first let's taste this some more and oh, see yeah. what it, I'm going to put my lime. It. I know it's so, so yeah. yummy. I keep tasting it. And Fiona finally left. So like full disclosure, we like Fiona, but, but mm, sometimes it's easier without her. Yeah. yeah. She's like that girl in the group. She's like that. children. She's that one. She's like, like, we're like acting like housewives right now. We are acting like housewives. We're Gossiping. talking about. Fe I know. We're oh like. Oh my gosh! She walked Fiona. away, and we started talking Let's talk about, about her. her. Oh exactly. My God. Well, actually, okay. We'll talk about that in a second because there is an evolutionary reason that people love to watch The Real Housewives, and I'll go over oh, that in a boy, second. Oh boy, there's science. It's a, I, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, it's well, a psychological I'm evolutionary to learn about it. thing. I'm yeah, it's not just a dumb TV show. There is also a dumb TV show. <laughs> 
So we have that. But okay, let's taste this again. Let's like, guzzle it's so, this again. It is so yummy. It's so yummy. It's delicious. Oh my lord. I think we both needed one of these today. Mm, especially mm, you mm. had a big day. I did. I don't know if I want to talk about it on the screen, but... You can talk about it vaguely, I guess. Ambiguously. Yeah, completely. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going from one job to the next. And I gave my notice, and I accepted the other one. And so, yeah, and it's a really positive thing, so... Yes, which may mean so. that we can film these yes I, so hopefully it's i will be closer balance. to closer mm -hmm. to the studio and, yes and have maybe some more time so. yeah more time it's gonna be amazing it is yes i'm very excited so, so okay. cheers so, cheers to, to that cheers to that cheers to that little balance in our yeah. lives that's really nice that's gonna help you to balance the whole motherhood and Ugh. work and creativity yeah. thing see i think that that's perfect we're doing this on a good day so we okay are. tasting this again it's very this um, is really nice because i thought it would be too sweet with the creme de cassis. Well, I feel not. like I feel like the ginger beer mm -hmm. really, really kind of yum. It almost makes it like a yum. It's so like like an alcoholic soda. It really does. It's really nice. Yeah. So like okay. a spritzer. Like kind a spr of. it is spritzerish, except it's not. I mean, the there's not that much carbonation from the ginger beer, but it's mm. nice. But the one thing that I kind of wish that we had, which we didn't have, is the buzz buttons. Because we looked for them everywhere. Yeah, it's not easy to get a buzz Where button. Where do you get a goddamn... That's probably why this drink costs $17 over at TomTom, Tom, uh, Lisa yeah. Vanderpump's bar. Because buzz buttons, they sell them on Amazon. But yeah. after our adventure... We kind of, yeah, we kind of boycotted with, Amazon a little after bit. After our smoothie slushy or machine, slushy machine. Yeah, yeah didn't, that was no bad. Showed. Yeah. That was not cool. That was not cool. Amazon subprime. <laughs> <laughs> Amazon yeah. deficient is what it was, it was and we're not yeah. happy. So. It was not buzzing my button, I'll tell you that. It, exactly. Not happening. So we're like, you know what, Amazon? No. In this little act of rebellion, we refused. And yeah. then I called the Asian market next door. And they door. were like... They thought I was crazy. They thought I was on something. They're like, are you <laughs> taking some of those buzz buttons? Yeah, we hear all the kids are doing it, you yeah. weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. I, I, I think... I think the lady got a little pissed at me. She mm. was like, yeah, really? Mm -hmm. Is mm. that a thing? A buzz button? She's like, are you talking about Szechuan pepper? I was like, no. She's like, yeah, I don't know what that is. Gotta go. Click. <laughs> <laughs> Customer service, anyone? So, yeah, that was that was bad. Okay, so shall I start now that we've had this nice little drink oh, that tastes so wonderful? Good. I so needed it. And I love the balance. Again, I'm just so into the idea that like they've managed to balance something in the it, housewives world, and it's good. Yeah, and I think balance yeah. is the balance is key. Is is really kind of what it's all about, right? Totally, totally. Well, so let's talk about though the buzz button that we didn't get to include. Yeah. Because what is a buzz button? After we said this a million times, it's not some weird kind of sex toy or anything. <laughs> it is. Um. So it is a Sichuan flower. Flower, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Is related to the daisy, so it's a little mm -hmm. yellow button-looking flower. Flower, yeah. And it's uh, and the reason they call it an electric daisy is because it gives you this weird like buzz, kind of a weird numbness, tingly, a tingle, numbness. Yes, and it also so it exacerbates the feeling, but it also numbs you, and it apparently makes you salivate so, a lot. <laughs> yeah, so even in the the feeling of being drunk, it it. Mm -hmm. it it exacerates yes. that yeah. too. And, and apparently it kind of makes things taste different all through the experience of having oh, it. Oh, interesting. So I'm like, that's so interesting. I yeah. really wish we'd gotten our hands on it, but... Yeah. Well, we'll have to get some buzz yeah, buttons. We'll have to we'll get some, back to yeah, buzz exactly. buttons. Exactly. We'll get back to you with the buzz button situation. But um, but I thought that was really interesting yeah. that that's what they do. And I was, I, I've had meals where I guess that maybe they're meant to be in there, but I never really kind of... You know, yeah. I, I'd like to isolate it. And I feel like that's maybe what the drink does. We should go to yeah. Beverly Hills. Well, we should go to West Hollywood. We should go, go to West Hollywood to and go and get the bar. one of these drinks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so speaking of the bar. So yeah. So Lisa Vanderpump is one of the housewives. Mm. And I know you've never watched the housewives, mm. but I'm sure you've heard people talking about the housewives. Oh, constantly. It's okay. everywhere good. I go. It's, good, good, good. It's, okay, um, what do you call it? It's, um, what's the word? It's, no, it's, it's a social, it, it's, it's everywhere. It's, it's everywhere. Part of, and everyone's referring to it. And yes, it's, it's part of the cultural. And I don't even um, know when it started. I feel like it started, it started in 10 two, years ago. Yeah, it started in 2006. Oh, and the okay. only reason I know this is because in 2004, there was a very successful TV show that aired that was called um, The Desperate Housewives. Yes. Okay. Now, see, I remember hearing about that, but okay. I was, yeah, I mean, 2006 is when I had my daughter. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, I thought you were going to say I was, I was in, in high school. I was like, I no, was you in weren't. some kind of coma or something. <laughs> yes, 
Well, but that is so true. Like motherhood I feel coma. A motherhood coma is so real, but I felt like I could watch TV when I had my kids, but I couldn't like go to the movies because I couldn't commit to a full yeah. two hour no. concentration binge, you know, and we'll talk about when we had our kids and what we were doing creatively and professionally because that's yeah. exactly what we're talking about today. Yeah. I mean, today we did so much research on this, but then everything just kept spiraling because there's so much. There's so much to talk about. Yeah. And in this also, topic. lest you guys think that this show is only for people who have kids or who are in a domestic situation yeah. <laughs> with a daddy figure. That is absolutely not so because, first of all... Did we define the daddy... We didn't define the daddy Diablo yet, which is the name of the drink. Right. right? But we will in a second. But, I mean, we can right now if you want. But I think that it's important just to say that, you know, a lot of people think about whether they want to have mm -hmm. kids or enter into a domestic situation. Some people might have been in one previously and are no longer in one, but is it just a major, major thing? It is, and, and, it, yeah. and it, it, you do have to figure out how it works, you know, and it when you're being creative. I mean, exactly. Because there's, there's going to be conflict. There's always with conflict. With what you mm -hmm. want to do yeah. and what your obligations Exactly. Are. Like, even if you're single and you'll never have kids, you still have... Like, some of my friends who are single and never had kids, mm -hmm. some of them are kick-ass professional people who made the decision not to for a specific reason, and right. we can talk about that later. But then other ones, it just kind of happened, and then they find themselves with this regret, or they find themselves with trying to fill their lives with other people's families, or mm -hmm. it's a hard thing to navigate, and I think that there's either side of the equation, there's guilt. Yeah, there's guilt, or there's some kind of conflict yeah there's a conflict or guilt every time yeah no matter what you do but the good thing is is that i think that creativity comes out of conflict and comes out it does. of it feelings does. that are you know as passionate as you know guilt and responsibility and being mm -hmm. torn so and we'll talk about how being either a parent or a housewife hinders creativity mm -hmm. or promotes it but right now, let's just talk about the housewives themselves and the franchise. Yeah, let's talk about why. it because I am yeah. completely clueless. I feel exactly. like I'm, I'm walking into... It's, well, it's such an interesting societal thing. People got obsessed. So after the Desperate Housewives came out, which was so the TV show... So why were they desperate? So the TV show was, it was based on this fictional street called Wisteria Lane. Mm -hmm. And Wisteria Lane, and I've actually been to, if you go to Universal Studios in... I have, I've been. Oh, so when you go on the studio... Ago. Yeah, so when you go on the studio tour, you go through this little, like, total Americana... Yeah, yeah, I've been there. Little street. I've been there. That's the set for Wisteria Lane. Oh my Lane gosh, for, I've been yes, to yes, 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 the see? set. So you, see, so you've been to the set, and you, yeah. didn't even, you didn't even know. Okay, beautiful. So they, So it was the whole thing of what goes on behind these closed doors, oh. of this perfect-looking... You know, suburbia. Neighbor, suburbia. Yeah, because yeah, people get intrigued by it. I think that there's this thing of looking at other people, and also the whole thing with the desperate. Well, keeping housewives. up with the Joneses is exactly. an actual. It's an yes. actual phenomenon. I Completely. mean, and people, you know, and and I see it. I mean, you you could say, you know, I work in a little yeah, you village. live in a little wisteria lane type thing. I mean, yourself. I work I mean, right now. I'm working in a little village. Yes. That, I mean, and you used to live in that village. Yes, I did. So yes. there is a whole desperate housewife thing going on very, there. That I very, very much so. Like what they fill their time with, how they define themselves, yeah. how they keep up with each other. Yeah. And it's incredible. But also, and that's the interesting thing. That village is very similar to what desperate housewives and mm. real housewives of a bar are about. Is that we're not talking about the crackhead next door? Who's we're not a talking about people that we're, don't have any money. No, we're talking about an aspirational type of housewife who has everything. An affluent, uh, yeah, group of people. Com very affluent. Basically, mm. these housewives spend their time, you know, taking care of themselves in yeah. terms of just really high end treatment, constantly going taking shopping, care of themselves. going to expensive lunches, and so their preoccupations are not the preoccupations that everybody their reference has. point is very very skewed very skewed compared to very much so but what that's what makes them so fun to look at i mean right. when they're going shopping you know they're not buying you know H &M. they're not going trying no. to go grocery shopping no. like me they're not they're not at all they're they their life is on a completely different level different level and and so the fictional ones as well as even the when the fictional ones one was pretending to be poorer than the other I mean, never really is. Right. You know, they're all very wealthy. But then when you look at, and, and I love that whole Hollywood thing of when you see somebody's home in a mm -hmm. movie or a TV show, it's never a realistic home for what their level of income should ever be. You know what right. I mean? It's like, I love that shit. It's like, my kids were watching this show that was called, I think, Good Luck Charlie. And the dad was an exterminator. And they live in this 
massive um yeah you're like home like you know you know like no people but anyway maybe if he was a plumber plumbers make good money plumbers make bank but yeah yeah, no but this guy's an exterminator i was like i don't know but so then the desperate house right, i'm friends, guzzling you sure are i'm trying to be good i think <laughs> i was a little dehydrated from That's like all is, the from your emotions today I was running like, high I I was like a roller coaster today it, it is i think that that literally makes you hungry and thirsty yeah so i oh. I'm, I'm feeling better now that I have good. a little, we're, like, we're, we're, we've, we've stabilized. My buzz button has kicked in. Your buzz in. button is like, zoom. <laughs> my buzz button has been buzzed. Exactly. <laughs> so, so the, so the Desperate Housewives success, it was a major successful mm-hmm. you know, TV show. And they capitalized on that. Actually, so Bravo, the network, decided to do an experiment to see would people watch if they did the real housewives. So if they took oh. these women, so actually it's really living... taking the voyeur, mm-hmm. the, the voyeurism exactly because voyeurism really has always been a thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I feel like it it really kind of took off in the early two mm-hmm. thousands. Where absolutely like, there was so much well, with the webcams and everything. Yeah, else. it became Completely. voyeurism became mm-hmm. like a thing, and now you know now we have everything is. Facebook and you know exactly. selfies and you post what well, you're doing every the, five minutes. Right. Well, it's the voyeurism and it's the showing off and it's the comparison as well. Yeah. And I think that so they what they did is they took a bunch of housewives in Orange County who lived in a gated community, which mm. is typically kind of a hidden away type of thing. Yeah. And they started exposing them. So one of the other interesting aspects. So we said it was kind of aspirational. So was it real in the sense? It's it's. Reality it, show, but it's semi. I, I okay. think it's semi scripted. Contrived. These women, they're not going to keep on the show if they don't create drama, and that's the right. other beautiful thing. Yeah. Is that psychologically we love to watch people that are better than us in some perceived way, yes. behaving worse. We love to see those people who are so fortunate, looking miserable. So we like to see the one who's like. So there was one of the housewives. So there. So the franchise had started with Orange County. They got New Jersey. A bunch Whoa. of like mafia ladies. Um, very high temper. So like one of them flipped a table once. And so that's what we love to watch when we're especially balancing our life as parents and professionals and creatives, we have to stay so in control and that's completely anathema to the creative urge. And so to see somebody flipping a table and going nuts, that is so gratifying for us. Yeah, because we're like, even they couldn't keep it together. Exactly. So we had a little cheese break. <laughs> I'm starving. Right. She's had a I worked day. up an appetite today because... <laughs> because it was a day. So there you go. It was a fucking crazy day. So, so yeah, so we're talking about the whole thing about the flipping the tables. That's like this amazing thing where you're watching these people who are kind of higher up than you, mm-hmm. but who still can't keep it together. And it's fascinating. And then I was reading about the whole psychology of, you know, how you can't look away from a car wreck or you can't look away from... You know, when somebody breaks into a fight, you physically can't look away because that's an evolutionary thing. You've evolved to... You need to look at the danger to survive. You need to understand what's going on. You need to understand the social construct. Mm. And so that's why we're always comparing ourselves to others all the time because we have to know where we fit in. Our survival depends on where we fit in in the, in exactly. the, in the hierarchy. Exactly. Yeah. So that's where the social... Where That's where the... the I'm that, fascinated by that. It's I think pretty, that's... Well, yeah, it's pretty fascinating and I think... The dog is And back. the fact that and they can, you know, you can tap into that with mm-hmm. a show. Exactly. These really right. simple, Totally. You know. And so it was so popular. And so they had, so I was saying that they had New Jersey, they had Beverly Hills, they had Orange County, they had, um. So did they didn't have, have Marin County. They had, Atlanta. well, they were, they were going to. So they've, they explored. So they had Atlanta. There wasn't enough drama here. I, they tried, they actually tried to kind of tap into it and then things I don't think worked out. They were going to do one in Hunt Country, Virginia, and they actually approached some people. Oh. Yes, and that I know, and then, which I thought would have been perfect, but yeah. that's when they did Southern Charm. Oh, they, they did Southern okay. Charm because they were like, we can't do both. And then they did uh, Potomac, but that was really boring. I didn't see it. No, I mean, you didn't see any of them. So. I mean, I've, been, I've been working. So, exactly. You're like, I can't deal with this. But um, one of the interesting, so I wanted to point out two of the most interesting characters to come out of the whole Real Housewives franchise. Well, there were a few. Oh, and then they had New York. Mm. And the New Yorkers were total bitches. The interesting thing is a lot of the New Yorkers were career women, so they weren't just housewives. So that's yeah. the interesting thing is, the, oh, and they had Miami. 
And Miami oh, was yeah. incredible. That would have been good. That yeah. would have been good. Miami I was lived good. in Miami. Well, yeah. And, well, Miami was good because they had the tension between kind of the Cuban or Hispanic community yes. versus, and then, like, Atlanta was more the African-American community. Mm-hmm. Um, and Potomac was mixed, and then New York is a bunch of Upper East Side bitches, pretty much. But they were, a lot of them were either career women or had married these wealthier older men, or yeah. they were like trust fund bitches, or they were trying to keep up. Super interesting to see how each person tries to make it work. Yeah. But in my two favorite kind of interesting characters are in uh, Beverly Hills, I mm-hmm. believe. So the first one being Lisa Vanderpump, who opened. Tom Tom and the 36 other bars and clubs. So Lisa Vanderpump is one of the more, to me, one of the more successful housewives. She and her husband have been very much a pair. She was kind of, she grew up in England. And Mm -hmm. so she started, um, she went to acting school when she was like nine. Oh yeah. Yeah. So she saw that. Exactly. So she's had a bunch of roles Mm -hmm. and then she's this businesswoman and she had kids. She's balanced it all somehow. She's done everything. She's done it all and she's balanced it all. I think that she has kind of this healthy idea of what her limits are. I think that's what she does. Like, I think she gets help where she needs it. Yeah. And I think that she just kind of balances things out. it sounds like if she's interested in something, she's like, yeah, let's do that and Mm -hmm. figure out how to make it work. Yeah. And with with Tom Tom, like, it's interesting because with Tom Tom and a bunch of her other clubs, she's decided to focus on the gay community in West Hollywood and Mm -hmm. in London and I think she taps into that really well. She's a very campy character. She mm-hmm. wears usually like pink and she's very ba ba boom. Her husband <laughs> too. She is. And her husband looks a little bit like an older Rod Stewart type Ooh, of person. I love Rod Stewart. Not as, you know, if you think I'm sexy, but oh. he's, he's you know, that sort of a dude. That's his, that's his, that's uh, his genre. Vibe that's a his little genre. bit. Yeah. Yes. Um, and then the other character that I think is fascinating and that I haven't watched as much in Housewives, but I've heard interviews of her all the time, and she's the one where that taps into our theme like a lot mm. more, is Erica Jane. And Erica Jane is the performance name of this woman named Erica Girardi, who's married to this guy mm. something Girardi. He's a very well-known lawyer. Mm. And she had to develop this alter ego. Mm. Erica Jane to be this performer. She looks like a drag queen, basically, when she's Erica Jane. Hmm. Um, but she had to develop that because she felt like in order to be super creative, she had to step away from her role as the wife to this serious guy. Oh, yeah. No, that makes sense. I like that. Yeah, it's kind of I like that she made a strategy she to, made, yes. to separate herself from this other identity so that she could pursue this identity. Exactly. No, I like exactly. it. Exactly. And that's kind of part of it, which is, okay, how do you exactly set up those yeah. barriers or how do you make that different identity for and yourself? I think and how do you break a, it down? I think that's what this episode is about. Essentially, Very like, so. how do you... Figure out because mm-hmm. you are in relationship to mm-hmm. your your children, your husband, your boss, you're this, you're that, you're right. whatever bullshit right. you got. You your cable, it your yeah. cable company. I mm-hmm. don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, so how do you define yourself in relationship to these? Exactly. Who's your daddy? It, who's your daddy? Yeah, because yeah. we're talking who's about daddy? the daddy Diablo. Yeah, and we're like, who's your daddy? So whether you're married or partnered up, what or have you, a boss, yeah, or have what do you have to get permission? Yeah. from exactly to do what you do. I mean, your kids can almost be your daddy if they're the ones who you know, in the way that we're putting it. Yeah. And we're not trying to create this battle of saying that no. that's super paternalistic. This is metaphoric. It's right? very metaphorical. <laughs> we're keeping it lighthearted. But yeah, who do you have to answer to? Even if maybe you've got the inner daddy. Well, I have a virtual husband. Yes. I have my inner husband. Yes. Actually, so I call him my inner husband. I love that. He's really nice. He, you know. <laughs> He's he, really nice. You're lucky. Oh, he, my God. I don't have a real husband, so yes. I have an inner husband. Mm-hmm. And he does things like take out the garbage and doesn't oh bitch God, about it. So he sweet. takes out the recycling and doesn't oh, bitch amazing. about it. amazing. You know, oh. I'm like, oh, honey, you're so sweet that you're taking oh, this garbage out and you're not that. complaining. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, but he's an inner husband, and that's what inner husbands do. That's what they do. And that's then, their job. you know, yeah. if I really want to buy, like, a new pair of shoes oh or a new God. pair of glasses or Permission something. granted. Yeah, it's, like, yeah. instantaneous, like, babe, whatever you want. <laughs> Whatever you need. He's like, you look so good. You look this. so good. You're not yes. fat at all. No. You know, I mean, he always thinks that I'm He's like, so good. did you lose weight? That's yeah. what he always says. The he first thing always. he says to me. Always. Like, babe, yeah. did you lose weight? He's like, not that are you, you need eating? To. Yeah, are you eating? Let me feed you. Oh, he, yeah. then he, yeah, like, then he makes me dinner. Then you're like, I'll do it. Yeah. I'll do it. <laughs> Yes, we're insane. Yeah, so the inner but husband is a thing. And it is a thing because, okay, 
my husband's darling and wonderful. However, there's a lot of conflict with the whole creative thing. Like he's yeah. not in a creative field, which sometimes I think is easier because we're not two dueling yeah. creatives and we had our episode right. about being in a creative romantic relationship. Yeah. Sometimes maybe it's easier, but sometimes it's, you know, well, sometimes there's a it's lack like, of understanding. Um, do you really need to do that? Is that right. some kind of right. like game you're playing? Right. Like, and why couldn't you do this before I got home from work? Right. You know, that sort of thing. So there's that tension. And with Erica Jane or Erica Girardi that I was talking about, she had that too, you know, when she was Erica Jane, her husband understood really well. She looked different, sounded different, acted different. Yeah. And he understood this is her alter ego. Yes. And this is what she needs to do. She needs to be gone. She needs to be performing. Yeah. She's going to my these wife isn't clubs. here right now. Yeah, my, it's Erica yeah. Jane. She's Erica not Jane. my wife. Yeah. But now that she has this level of success and that she's kind of come into her yeah. own, the 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 two are kind of merged, merged a little bit. Yeah. Yes. Very much so. And I think that happens to all of us as we figure out how to incorporate our lives yeah. as, you know, our different identities. I think that maybe we do start to bring it all together. A I mean, bit even more. my daughter is like, I can't believe my mom is a YouTuber. <laughs> I'm like, I don't even know what a YouTuber is. I like, know. You're like, is I'm that not a me? I'm not a YouTuber, but I am a YouTuber. I mean, yeah. I yeah. she's, you know, her friends are like, oh my God, I can't believe your mom has a podcast that's so <laughs> random. You know, and I was like, you're I like, have a no, cool mom that It's has not a random, it's cool. Yeah. Yes, I was exactly. like, you're so lucky to have a mom that has a YouTube channel. Exactly. And, exactly. Um, and that's one of the other things is that I think that with all the guilt that you have from being away from your kid or not paying 100% attention, yeah. because that's the battle that we have, you know, and we're going to talk about this more at length, but that's the battle that we have when you have the children you can never pay 100% attention to them you when can. you're working on a creative project. It just doesn't you're work that way. You're either resenting them because, yes, because yes. you want to do things that, you know, feed your, your own yeah. personal, you know, creative, spiritual, psychological, whatever totally. it is, totally. you know, whatever monster you're trying to feed. Exactly. Or you have to feed you them. Know, <laughs> what are, it, or it's or like your you're, you're either you're resentful trying because yes. you're trying to accomplish those things mm -hmm. or you feel guilty yes because always. you're out you know you're working all the time to right. pay the bills and you feel like you can't be no, exactly. there on the same level and you see you know I, I have to say though you know witnessing a lot of what goes on in some of these um affluent households yeah, around us <laughs> you know where they do have a lot of extra time and resources right. mm -hmm. I don't feel like they're spending more quality time with their children no, or their families no, 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 no. than than I am no because I know that for me I mean I had so and and that's the difference so we're so, I mean it's a huge generalization it's really none of my goddamn business sure but, but we're delving into it yeah. we're, we're doing we're doing that voyeuristic thing yes. that you do when you watch the housewives we're we're trying to delve into that yeah and trying to determine what it's like because so there's all of the artists who refuse to have children because they thought that that was the antithesis of creativity because yeah. creativity is all about letting go and being on the edge and being dangerous and, you know, doing risky stuff. Whereas parenthood is the opposite, right? Yeah. You, you're like, you're uh, safe, you're, predictable, yes. conservative, controlled, like, you know, that's yeah. what parenthood is. And to me, like that whole cool mom thing, I mean, being the mom, mm -hmm. I felt, you know, especially when I had my kids, I was, you know, and you were too, we were both pretty young when we had our kids and having to change from being the cool person yeah. to being some the responsible mom, mom person. It's not that fun no. at all. No. And then you've got the difference. I mean, you've got all these artists who are like, I'm not going to have a kid because I know that it's not, you know, I can't be as successful mm -hmm. and I can't be as creative if I have one. And then, and like, I mean, we were talking before we started shooting about Marina Abramovic. Right. Who basically, yeah, mm -hmm. it, so bad. She basically I was like, had, she just would call the clinic. Yeah. I mean, if she had a problem. Yeah. So she had <laughs> I mean, three, three abortions. Yeah. Because she decided that she just wasn't capable yeah. Of balancing motherhood and artistic expression, she said, and that's why men are more successful in art. And I was like, wow. Bitch. Well, I don't, I don't uh, hardcore, know that. I mean, that's hardcore. I don't know that men are right? more successful, successful no. in art. And maybe financially. See, that's the other thing is that I think that there's this idea that men are more financially successful on average. And yeah, that's because of the biological imperative that we have to take care of our kids. Right. And we have to slow down. We have to be the responsible one and all that stuff. However, and then there's a difference between having one kid and having Striving two. Striving me to drink. Right? Seriously. But also, the, the type of attention and energy that you have to spend on your creative endeavors, 
depends on the endeavor. Like, yeah. so a lot of writers, are, and I'm a writer, you're a fiber artist. I was reading about writers who are like, you know, there's a huge difference between having one kid, which mm -hmm. is possible as a writer, and having two, which is impossible. Yeah. And I was like, well, great, because I've got two, so I'm kind of, you know. Thoughts, and then but... I also don't believe in shit like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I think people just make excuses for oh, not yeah. doing yeah, what yeah, they yeah. mm -hmm. want to do. Like, oh, I can't do it because I have two kids, or right. I can't do it right. because I have two jobs. And I... I just call bullshit on that. Yeah, because, well, that's the other thing is that there's a, an actual biological brain wiring thing yeah. that when you become a mom, you become a lot more resourceful and a lot yeah. more focused. So you're yes. just like, boom. No, I, I was telling kids. you before that mm -hmm. I feel like I'm more productive and right. more creative right. since I became yes. a mom because I'm not like bumbling around and going on weird well, yeah. road trips with my friends. Right. Well, they were literally using going to see bands all the time. Which, or... granted, is lovely. It was super fun. <laughs> I had a lot of fun in my 20s. Yeah. But, but I was not, you know, I you I focused. finished college, but right. I barely. But, you know, <laughs> I, I was... I wasn't as focused right. as no, I am for sure. now. Well, they, they were talking about mother rats who biologically and like mentally mm. are very similar to us. And they're Can saying you imagine? That, uh, enough, I know, <laughs> rats. Who knew? They're saying that they, um, when before they have kids, when they're going after their prey, they're kind of like, la, 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 la. Like yeah. literally zigzagging around, do, do, do. Yeah. Don't really care. The minute they have their little kids, they go, boom. And they're on that prey. Yeah. They don't have the time to waste. They're going to get it. And I'm like, that's very interesting. But then there's also a huge level of stress mm -hmm. that comes on with that whole balancing of their own life and taking care of the kids, which is the same for us. Totally. And so if your resources are limited, like, so we were talking about the wealthier women yeah. who have all the resources in the world, the level of stress there is a lot lower. I don't think it impacts the level of guilt because, you know, I used to have a lot of help with the kids, but I always had the guilt. Always. It was like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm not spending... Enough to, I mean, even, no matter how much time I spent, yeah, you know, it's like, oh, you always have the guilt. Yeah. You know, and so, but if your resources are lessened, and let's say that you have to be fighting a lot more for sure survival, I think that the level of stress that you get will probably start to shut down some of the creative impulses, or you hold on to them for dear life for survival. Yeah, I mean, I feel like... Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely feel like there have been times in my life where I've just been completely in survival, and those parts of me were just... I was like, create. I don't have time for that. That's, right. No. You have great. to feel some sense of security. Yes. Yes. But when you know that you don't have that sense of security, I think that you really need to claw that back. Yeah. To where you. Because I you feel have like it, when cause... you're in your twenties and you don't have those responsibilities, it's still the same thing as some kind of you. You. It's the opposite of feeling secure. Yeah. It's you just don't have responsibilities, right? Yeah, exactly. It's, You're not secure at all. Yeah, like you, all the drama that you have, like, and that's exactly right. Is when I was in my early twenties and I was like dating and running around and partying and where's my next, you know, fun time gonna yeah. be? I wasn't any more, you know, as you were saying, I wasn't yeah. any more productive or any more creative. I mean, yes, I felt more creative, but I think it was this scattered creativity. Yeah. And now we've basically had to choose our creative outlet. Like yeah. that's the thing where it's like, you have like, to choose and you have to, or you have to a lot yeah. time for yes. it. Yes. Yes. And then you have to actually participate in it. Totally. And then on you, a regular basis. Exactly. And then, well, and I think that part of that comes from saying, okay, how much is my time worth? Yeah. And what am I getting out of this creative activity? So either it's feeling it's like feeding my soul and it's feeding my imagination, it's feeding everything, mm -hmm. or maybe I'm actually making money from it. And I think that that's where we mm -hmm. go from being like, tra la la, I'm doing these little drawings mm -hmm. that nobody's going to see to, well, let me actually make this into something real because my time has to count for something. Right. You know, and I think that that's kind of interesting where you decide that, okay, this playing around creativity mm -hmm. is all lovely, but like I need something to show for this. Right. So whether it's finishing a project or monetizing it, mm -hmm. I think that that's definitely something that is not negligible when you right. think about, you know, that thing. Okay, so let's talk about the Daddy Diablo. Because yeah. I know that you, that concept. Yeah, of, I mean, I keep it, asking you. Yeah, Since I, I showed up, I'm like, okay. Daddy Diablo, what are we going to do with the Daddy it? Diablo? Yeah, totally. So, yeah, what's what does Daddy Diablo mean? Because you have that angelic inner husband who's so nice oh he's such a he's nice he's the opposite yeah. of a daddy well Diablo. i created him so. i know well, that's that why beautiful? he's so awesome well okay so that creating him is an interesting thing because mm -hmm. i think that we can all create our husbands in a way like yeah. i think that when you have a romantic partner or a family mm -hmm. dynamic 
I think that you do need to mold that into something that works for you. Mm -hmm. Like when I, so when I met, when I met my husband, I was younger. And then before we got married, when he, I guess he'd proposed and I was, or maybe right before he did. And I was like, listen, you need to understand something. <laughs> I was like, I'm a messy person. I'm a creative person. I'm sometimes an impulsive person. And I'm like, and these things may modify or change slightly. Yeah. However, I am never going to be an accountant. I'm never going yeah. to be the kind of person who, you know, you come home and she's got, well, sometimes I'll have my apron on and yeah. we're cooking something that's she not. She often does. I, I often do. I probably don't wear my apron. I probably am wiping my no, hands with my really jeans. No, she really likes and, to cook. Yeah, I do. But I'm, thank but God I'm, for me. But I'm, yeah. I'm like, let me feed you. Let me feed I know. you. You're hungry. I was like, my yeah. husband's hungry. <laughs> yes. Please feed me. But, but I had to tell my husband that, listen, you know, I'm not the one who's going to make the bed. Every, like with hospital corners because right. that's not me. However, I, you know, and I'm not, I'm never going to sit on my ass, but I'm never going to be that person who is, you know, really cut and dried with certain right. things. You know what I mean? And, and he was like, I get it. You're so, you know, yeah. and then every once in a while he'd be like, why is the bed not made? Or why didn't you put together these, you know, finances? And I was like, um, I kind of told you like, yeah, I should have made you sign you that. You had contract. a disclosure. I had a early yeah, on. I had a disclosure you signed contract. the waiver. Exactly. And then so because we were saying with the daddy Della, I was like, let's try to come up with some examples. Mm -hmm. So I have my I was visiting a friend and I'm gonna try to give as few details as possible. Though I know her husband, well, he told me he doesn't watch this. And he told me he doesn't watch this because creativity is a waste of time. Oh yeah, it's a waste of time. Yeah. Mm. And I was like, okay. Um, kind of shocking because his wife is a craver, was a creative. Mm. They had a similar contract when they met where she was like, I'm a creative. I yeah. may not make as much money as me, but as you, but never make me feel that I'm less than. Right. Because my financial output is less for now. She goes, for now, may, you know, she's a great mindset. Never make me feel that it's less. Never yeah. make me feel that it's not important. Right. And so when he met her, she was working um, in a creative but executive job. Then she stopped because she got pregnant and she did a series of uh, artworks. Yeah. And he was kind of like, oh, I like this one. I like that one. And she was like, if you like it, you have to buy it. Ooh. And I was like, okay, that's really interesting. Because my husband has tried to give away some of my artworks to his friends. Like when his friends were like, oh, I really like this. He's like, oh, you can have it. I'm like, no, you can't. It's for sale, not for donation. Like that's, you know, you can't yeah. do that. But her husband, she told me, so he would buy her, her artworks from her, <laughs> which was really interesting, except that whole attitude slowly, slowly, slowly started to go away. Deteriorated. It deteriorated big time to where, like, they started off early in their marriage. Their environment at mm -hmm. home was fashionable. They did fun things. He, you know, really respected her as an artist. They yeah. were going to all of these cool events. And little by little, that fell away to, to where their lifestyle now is... Still very nice, like let's not, you know, infinitely less creative and mm. high end and why? I think that the contract was allowed to fall away little by little. Yeah. And I think that, you know, quote real life intervened. And I hate that thing of real life because that's the whole point is yeah. you need to make your creative side part of your real life. Yeah, you do. You know? You do. So, do you have any examples of Daddy Diablos who were kind of negative in the whole... I mean, I know that you have, you know, friends who have exes who don't support any of their creative endeavors and tell them that they have to, like, they won't keep the kids if they have an event that they have to go to or they won't, you know, allow them to express themselves. I was telling you, yeah, yeah, I mean, I was telling you one one of my good friends is going through a divorce mm -hmm. right now mm -hmm. and... You know, and, and yeah, and basically, you know, he was really anti her getting a job. That and she actually so much, and she yes. actually has way more education than him. Oh, I mean, he didn't wow. even go to college. She, so she was like, okay, she acquiesced, and she, you know, was like, okay, I, you know, he's like, I don't want anyone else raising our children, and it See, was that's the other it was thing extreme. It was like his yeah. ego was like bigger yeah. than their house, right? Yeah, yeah, and so. Yeah, the irony is, is that, you know, he was anti, anti, anti. She couldn't get a job. And 
And then all of a sudden, she finds him swiping on Tinder, Oops. looking for hookups, and Oops. finds out that he, Oops. and then he proceeds to tell her that he has a Mash.com account. Because she's not sexy anymore, because she doesn't yeah, do anything Yeah, because she anymore. doesn't do she's anything. She's just a mom. Mm-hmm. She's a housewife. She's a housewife. She's and not very sexy or attractive. So, and yeah. that's what they want at the beginning. And that's the terrible thing. That's the daddy joke. And I told I her all it. along. Yeah. I'm like, do not agree to this. This mm-hmm. is bullshit. Yes. I was like, yes. you, you are, you know. He, and then all the time it was always like, you know, he was always putting her on a budget. Like, I would literally jump off the bridge if someone put me on a budget. Oh, I, and so I that's, am, that's and my am, example of Daddy Diablo. As, yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, I am pretty frugal. I yeah, mean, I'm extremely. It, yeah. But if I spend money at my house, mm-hmm. it's me and my inner husband Your that inner I have to deal with. Darling, though. He's and just he doesn't so, care. He's like, I get it, babe. You mm-hmm. had a rough week. You mm-hmm. needed that. <laughs> get it. But, exactly. but I know ultimately I have to deal with me. I'm mm-hmm. the one that I have to deal with yeah. and I know my limits and I mm-hmm. know, you know, what the cost is because I pay the price. Right. I, I really, you know, like she would tell me about him putting her on a budget, mm-hmm. but then he would go and spend like, oh, that's, yeah. Unreal. Mm-hmm. He would go buy like weird exercise equipment. Oh my God, anyway, yes. I mean, yes. that was to me like so, the red sign or right. the red flag. That, oh Yeah. And well, I know so many women like that where they're put on a budget. But he dumped her. He like he terrible. he filed for divorce, and he would have thrown her out on the street. The oh same God. guy that said, "Please don't get a job." Yeah. Please don't get a job. I right. don't want anybody else raising our kids. And they say that there's so much value in that. Yeah, they're the same guys. We're gonna screw he the women dumped, out of the he child dumped support. He dumped her. And you know what I said? Gone. I yeah. said you need to get someone to get you know to fight for you to get. Yeah. Paid back for all the time well, exactly. that you helped well, build his career. Well, yeah, there's a and there's such a value home. to that. Like, I think that a there's a value to. I went crazy. Uh, well, I, no, you didn't go crazy. You went sane. You were being you were being sane. Like you were being. I just don't realistic. like the double standard. He breached no. a contract. Right. He made her agree to this. Yes. Well, he didn't make her, as her other attorney said. No one held held a gun to your head. Gotta love that attorney. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was like, um, mm-hmm. fire her. Fire her now. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I do believe that a contract is really important, and I think that not. Only should you have a contract with your other with your partner but I think a, a contract with yourself like mm. these are some of the things I'm not gonna give up these are some of the things that should remain important to me and I, I yeah. owe it to myself and then I think that our kids need to have an understanding as to what's important to us and I think yeah. that that's the other element of balance so you know and that's the difference between one kid and two kids you can take one kid with you places right Taking two is a whole yeah, other it's a beast. whole other level. You know, it changed, but I think that fundamentally, you change the minute you have one. Right. You know, that's the to me that was the biggest change. <clears throat> I think if you have maybe three, it's like forget it. Like then oh you're God. super three creative because you're like, I'm crazy. Uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. But <laughs> but I think that your kids need to see you being a real person. Yeah, I, mean, I just don't. They do get like. These parents, so one of the real housewives, and this is funny, I was reading an article, it was a cute article of how um, people wanted uh, Kim Richards, is Kim Mm -hmm. Richards her name? She's one of the housewives, she's Kathy Hilton's, um, Kathy Hilton's sister, Mm. so Paris Hilton's aunt. Okay. And she's, you know, this glamorous brunette, her husband, his name is, um, I think it's Maurizio Umansky or something. He's a big real estate agent. Like I, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know how I know these things. Like, I see yeah, yeah, yeah. So they have all these kids. They have this massive house in Beverly Hills. She's always so glam. She's always dolled up, high heels, whatever. But her last daughter, whose name is Portia, of course, of um, course, of course. And somebody was saying, I want her to be my mom. And I'm reading what she does for her daughter. And she brings a tray up, and she has help galore right, right. In the house. In the morning, she comes over and she brings a tray, a personalized tray to her daughter with like fresh squeezed juice, which I'm sure the maid made maybe, but you know, this whole tray for the daughter. Yeah. Daughter doesn't have to get up out of bed. Then she brushes her hair, God, does her hair. Family. Me- well, yeah, but would you want that? Like, so she does her hair, she puts on her shoes, puts on her socks, does everything for her, like basically carries her around. Oh, it's and so creepy. like these, right? Okay, thank you. I thought that was creepy. It's super creepy. It's really weird. Like you're setting up your kid for these weird expectations for how people are going to treat you in life. Like yeah. that's really nice. Your inner yeah. husband treats you almost that way. He's but, like that. Yeah, he's like that. But But honestly, I think that at the end of the day, it's not realistic, and it's setting your kid up to think that they're the like 
And our kids are the most the important center things. of our universe. Sure, they are, but they're not going to be the center of other people's universe. They're not. They need to learn that they're not that special in the greater scheme of things. Like, right. It's it's a huge letdown when you're like, wait, you mean I'm not as important as right. my mommy led me to think I was? You know, I didn't have to tie my own shoes because my mommy thought I was so special. And you mean nobody else is going to do that? Right. Nobody else is. And all of that time you spent like slaving away doing things where your kid is not independent anymore, mm -hmm. you could have been. <gasps> being oh my god i just I, it's like what do you mean this? You, like, all the you now the the adrenaline is no like i'm having the, adrenaline right yeah so funny. no i did so i mean like the whole yeah build yeah, up the roller coaster oh my god i did and so now i'm like woo. I, that happened but the sad thing is i know exactly how you feel because that sort of thing happens to me constantly that's what our life is yeah, trying to balance it is. you know the kids and the family and the creativity and everything else yeah it's, it's like that all the time but I think that my kids need to see the frustration that comes from trying to balance things. Yeah, my you know? daughter sees it all the time. Yeah, they, oh, but good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like so many parents want their kids to look at them and think that they're infallible, mm -hmm. and they want to they, they they act like they're perfect and like I love going to mommy and me and singing. I fucking hated that shit. Oh my it god, was, it, it was well. That's what that's what I loved about I I think I've told you about Carl Carl of Nalsgard, the Norwegian writer that wrote My Struggle and that oh, whole six yeah, part yeah. series. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite parts is when he becomes a stay-at-home dad. Oh, God. And he's trying to write his book. And so he he takes the kids to, like, the kinder single... You know, his wife's like, I set I up the thing so you can go to that. Shit. And he, he talks about going there, and it was all moms. Oh, he's, yeah. like, the only guy. And they all want him and, as a pet. And they were, he's like, like, such yeah. an exotic creature. And they were, like... like oh it's like they all want the gay dad, and, and they all want the stay-at-home dad. Oh, my God. And he, all of them. he was mortified. He was, like, my ego was destroyed. Like, oh, my yeah. masculinity was destroyed. Oh, yeah. Like, I felt disgusted. Disgusted with myself after I was singing these <laughs> stupid songs. I couldn't do it. Oh, I was cracking. I was never able to do it. Up the sad this. thing is, is that that little kinder music thing is yeah. supposed to be creativity for your kids, but it's not. It's, it's so packaged. not. It's contrived. And I, I freaking hated it so much. I couldn't sing. And my kids saw that. Like, I don't even think I ever took my son. And my son is a singer now. Yeah. Which cracks me up. Like, I never took him to fucking... I was like, why don't you sing? I never did it. You sing. Mommy doesn't sing. I never sing. did it either. You do it. So I, I went with my it. daughter, and my daughter's like, wow, you really hate this shit. <laughs> like, it sucks. It sucked. It sucked. And then all the play dates and play groups where everybody was talking about it. diapers. I'm like, didn't we have a life before this? No. Didn't... Didn't we have something else to talk about? What else are you guys working on? And that's yeah. where it was just so soul killing because yeah. I'm like, I don't care about the diapers. I don't care about which nursery school we're going to. I don't care. I don't know that, like, honestly. Like, what does it matter which nursery school it your kid goes it to? It doesn't. And me knowing the nursery school teacher's, like, name 10 years down the road. No. And, like, that doesn't matter as long no. as they were good for the kid and I was nice to them. Like, that's all we need. Yeah. We don't need to be, you know, best they friends. They learn their letters. That's yes, great. that's it. That's and fine. so that was just so hard for me. Like, because I always felt like the bad mom. Yeah. I always felt like I was balancing the thing. So, like, for me, full disclosure, I actually got induced a week uh well my son i got induced when i was pregnant with my son because i had to defend my phd a week oh. after my due date yeah oh. and so i was like uh you're I'm, like we gotta get this yeah move we need to get the show on the road because huh. it was but that was my priority yeah and it's terrible to say that because i mean yeah maybe i put stress on the baby for me it didn't feel like a choice no it felt like something i had to do i would have kicked myself the rest of my life if you didn't finish it. If I hadn't finished my PhD. Yeah. Like, no, I, I agree with you. You know, it was I agree with you. a horrible thing. And then once, you know, that was done, then every other project I ever had, it was such a struggle to balance with, yeah. you know, taking care of the kids. Or I'd see the nanny going for a walk with the kid and I'd feel bad. And then I'd find, I'd spend my time when I was supposed to be writing feeling guilty. Yeah. You know, or taking care of like your own human needs, you know, yeah. like, oh my God, I'm so tired or I need to eat. Well, that's was the interesting thing about reading this this um, Norwegian male writer, mm -hmm. you know, Karl of Nalsgaard, it, it was interesting because he struggled with his masculinity being yeah. a stay-at-home dad. But I think we but struggle he, with our femininity being a mom. But you he know? wasn't, yeah, no, I think we do too. Mm -hmm. But I think we often, his struggle was more about his masculinity. Our mm -hmm. struggle is usually more about our guilt and yeah. how we're perceived mm -hmm. yes. by other people very much so because of whether we're being and i guess it's still the same thing whether 
we're being nurturing enough is right. the same thing Always. as our femininity. But the, the, the thing that you eventually learn, and that uh, unfortunately the sad part being that you learn it when it's a little bit too late, when your kids are grown, you learn, oh, you fuck up your kids no matter what you do. Yeah, you They're can't gonna get out of it. They're going to blame you for something. Forever. And you're going to feel guilty for something. Yeah. And you might as well really do. So if we can have... And maybe once you realize, like, how crazy you are to begin with you'll yes. be like thank god they didn't spend so much time exactly. with me it's, it's probably so better off because it's so of it. true and also if we can ha touch anybody out there who's listening yeah who doesn't have kids yet or who just had them guilt and is a guilt. waste of time it's don't a waste do of time. it don't and, do it but if it feeds your art i mean unless you're just it. a complete <laughs> asshole and you're like freebasing heroin in the living yeah, room that's not awesome that no, is not awesome, not awesome. No. stop doing it right now stop it's it. bullshit <laughs> stop it crack is whack <laughs> don't do it <laughs> But, but yeah, we when I was so when I first had my baby, uh, my daughter, both of my kids were really small, probably because I was like eh, so tense all the time. <laughs> um, but that's just me. Um, so when I had her, she Alice was, was small too. Oh, mm, coincidence six, or six something? Oh, mine were five something. Jesus, mm, premature practically. Well, my son was. <laughs> you were just like get him out, get him out, over and out, ship him out. So um, I. Uh, my daughter was super colicky, so she comes oh, out. She's so like was crying Alan. from day she's one, screaming for months. It's probably our fault. Oh my god! Totally, totally. <laughs> guilt. Oh, yeah, I mean, crying. if we go down the road right? of Fairfax, like, oh they would god. be like, "Oh, you didn't have a That's natural birth because you didn't eat your placenta." And it <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have a doula. Did you? I did not have a fucking doula. Shit. Shit. Yeah. I didn't have a water birth either. I did not have a water birth, a doula. You know what? That's why. Or That's a why. birth plan. Me neither. That's probably why our kids were like called and I didn't, pieces of shit. Yeah. Yeah. I oh, didn't. know. That's bad. No, I mean, <laughs> I think it's all starting to. It's coming together. It's unraveling. We're trying to understand. It's unraveling. Yeah. All of a sudden we're like, ooh, maybe we should ooh, like change take the subject. Responsibility right? Oh for my God. Bad well, choices. Right? But like the guilt starts. The crazy thing is that is that we're fed guilt. Yeah. From day one. No, like, you're like sh they shovel oh the God. shit like, into you. You get pregnant, they're like, Are you taking prenatal vitamins? Yeah. Are you doing this? Are you are doing you, that? Are you gonna are you, have a natural? Are you gonna have a natural? Do you have are a birth you, plan? Are you gonna breastfeed? And you're like, you need to chill. And so, oh my god! And then everybody tells you their story, their horrible everything, story. Everything, yeah. everything, and you're like, okay, I don't need to hear that until maybe like let's revisit this. You know, yeah. twenty years later, we'll find it mildly entertaining. Yeah. But I had my daughter; she's crying all the time. I'm like, I know she's not dying from anything. Okay, even though when you have a kid, you think maybe they are. But, oh, constantly. But I was like, I thought okay, my kid it's was. two a.m. I call the the, the hospital. And I'm like, okay, she's been crying for twenty four hours, <laughs> more or less. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine and I'm like she's not eating very much but then again you know what do I know and I'm <laughs> just like I, I'm just I just have no idea what I'm doing and none of my <laughs> friends had kids so I didn't know like that's the other thing when you're yeah. an artist or a creative not that many of your friends have kids yeah you know especially not if you have a kid young right my friends all thought she was an accident like they all thought I mean when I went to the doctor <laughs> to have a pregnancy test they're like I'm so so sorry. <laughs> I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> how old were you? I, I wasn't that young. I was like 26. Yeah, that's young. I was 31. Oh shit, you were old. You were yeah. you were a senile mother. No. Yeah, no, I was I was very seasoned. Yeah, well, so yeah, I was 26. But I did the same crazy shit. Like exactly. I would take her to the hospital right? and I'd be like, she won't stop crying. Right. So the hospital tells me I have to bring her in right away. I'm like, no, I'm gonna make an appointment for like 8 a.m. How's that? They're like, no, no, no. And they're like, and if you don't bring her in right away, we're going to call social services. And I got so pissed because I'm like, okay, you're oh, guilting me. Oh my God. Are you're you fucking guilting kidding me, me right now? When I'm actually concerned enough to be calling about my kid. Yeah. And I'm just worried, but I think she can survive another six hours. Yeah. Okay. Like, meanwhile, there's a crack baby because we were in Philadelphia. And actually, yeah. my daughter was so little, she had a crack baby car seat. So I know that the hospital had yeah. a lot of crack babies. Like, there's a crack baby lying in a crack <laughs> den somewhere. The mom's not even worrying that the kids, you know, have dead. And you're going to call freaking CPS yeah, on me? On me? I was like, no, that's insane. Stop guilting me. And then when I was no, having problems it, with breastfeeding, they're like, oh, my God. Oh, you need to go see another lactation consultant. I'm like, I have a PhD. Yeah. I'm not stupid. You know, this is just not working. It's not easy. You, it's yeah. hard. Yeah. You guilting me no, they do is not going to make me feel better. I mean, I remember when I found out that Alex was breached, because I had to have a C-section, 
they, you know, the nurse was like, oh, you have to do a cephalic version, which means they manually they go, turn <laughs> her in the stomach. Okay, so, but, yeah, that's where they turn the baby Yeah, around. so they try to physically, and then... It's really once comfortable. They explain, it's a fun thing. Yeah, but, I mean, there's... It's basically, like, the success rate is 50-50. Yeah. Like, so, yeah. you, you know, you put all that... You do this stressful kind of sketchy yeah, thing, and then know. it's, you know, maybe it's successful. And even if they turn them, they sometimes turn back. So, basically... Yeah, and I was like, mm, you're not doing that to my baby. No. That well, shit is not happening because of right. some... Oh, and they're like, oh, we put you on an IV just in case you have to have an emergency C-section. Just in case you stroke out. You're like, no, it doesn't like, sound no. worth it. No. And, and I got super guilted because... Oh, I know. Because I was like, no, I'm scheduling my, my C-section. Yeah. You are not going to like double wrap the cord around my kid's exactly. neck. Exactly. And you're like weird little... But that's the thing. That's the thing. You're, you're like... You don't have the right information because nobody's getting it to you. Yeah. And that's the same thing as when you're a creative. Like, you don't get information. There's no user manual no. that's going to be sufficient for you to know how to balance things. So when you're having your kid and they're, they're just throwing all this shit at you. And I think the same thing happens to creatives now on social media. where like, they're throwing shit at you about what an artist is supposed to look like. Right. And what an artist no, that's is supposed a really to be. that's a really good point. Or what a mom's supposed to be or what a spouse is supposed to be. And how is it? You, yeah. Right. And you never measure up. No. Ever. You never no. measure up. And, and so you never the, will. So you yeah. you have to you have to be clear about how you measure up to yourself. And yeah. that was really that whole experience is I remember I called the surgeon in San Francisco and I had a discussion with her and I said, let me get this straight. Mm -hmm. This is a 50% success rate. Mm -hmm. That is a flip of a coin. That is not a success rate. No. If that's they bullshit. told me that's that 97% of the time we do this oh and God, it's successful, then, you do it. yeah. then we have a conversation. Right. I, and I was like, I'm not doing this. The dog this is stupid. Them. Yeah. And you, no. you kind of have to do that. When, with everything. When you're navigating yes, these with people in these situations, mm -hmm. you constantly have to say, wait a minute. Yeah. Let me Does stop. Does this make sense? Yeah. Let me stop drinking the Kool-Aid for a minute. Let yeah. me stop listening to like, you know, if everybody's doing it, like when we live in the communities that we live yeah. in or in the, just the, the society that we live in, yeah. we're told that this is the case. And it's yeah. like, wait, hold up. Wait, let me think about this. You have to be minute. on a keto diet. You have to drink celery juice. You, you have, have to have to, a morning ritual. Right. You have to do you this. Have to you have to go to mommy have to... and me classes. Yeah. You have to send your kid to X, Y, School you have to do it. every activity: stupid. cello, piano, mm -hmm. tennis, oh my God. volleyball, baby Einstein, baby, baby Einstein. Einstein. Oh yeah, <laughs> baby Einstein. That was, was my the dumbest babysitter. thing yeah. in the goddamn baby, world. Yeah, though. she got rich as fuck. Uh, I know. That was really right? good. That's incredible. Good job. What good was job. her name? I, I can't remember, remember her name. Whatever, but baby but Einstein. Whatever. She's spending her money. To you. That was some creative she, thinking right there. Yeah, dude. She man. cashed in on that. Right. But I think that that's the other thing where creatives have to realize like talking about you know thinking and talking to people and informing yourself yeah. i think that we need to make really a huge concerted effort to not only be mm -hmm. in the mommy groups or not only be in your professional group or not only be in that you know at the tennis club that the housewives go to you need to seek out other creatives yeah who are doing it as well and and don't take everything they say as gospel but just do absorb that support yeah. or, or that inspiration that you might get from them because mm -hmm. i think that that's absolutely major yeah it is yeah. i mean it it's always been the case where i feel like i don't really fit into any particular box mm -hmm. although i could but pretty much gift. cruise right, all right, of them right. i and could that's cruise all of them yeah and so i i feel like over time i've become more and more comfortable with the fact yeah. that i don't really belong any particular place but right. i pretty much go, well and we go through different phases. Right. So you've got that phase where you're like full on in the mommy thing or but then you're not fitting and it feels weirder not to be fitting. Yeah. And so you're going to this phase where you're feeling comfortable cruising around the different ones. Mm -hmm. And I've been in this phase where I'm kind of cutting a lot of stuff away because yeah. I'm so busy working. Everybody's like, oh, have you seen so-and-so or did you go yeah. to this? I'm like, no, I didn't go to Orange Theory because I'm working, you know, Orange or no, Theory. I didn't see so-and-so because I'd much rather finish my work and then see so-and-so. Yeah. It's just a better you're proposition being more, for me. I have to select. Yeah, you're you know? being more selective. I have which to be is more good. selective. And I think that that's crucial no matter what. Yeah, it is. And so I think that, you know, who you're hanging out with, the choices you're making, the information that you're You have to be true to it, yourself. You do. Ultimately. You do. And then the other thing, we were talking about flipping the tables and that that being, you know, the, the yeah. crazy, yeah, the, the outbreaks that yeah. these women in the housewives do that, that people are so fascinated by. Mm -hmm. And that to me is almost artistic. That's that loss of control. Yeah. It is a very artistic thing. And that's why we're so completely fascinated by it. 
But I think that we don't, like, we're so concerned in our society with being so yeah. in control. And we're concerned with being perfect parents. Yeah. And I think that if we freak out once in a while, like, I've had freak outs where I've told my kids, like, I can't deal with you being a little asshole to me because I need to do my work and I need to be creative and I need yeah. to do my thing and you're not letting me and I feel bad. And just breaking down yeah. and they're like, oh, shit, mom's a real person. Ooh. No, I did that Ooh. recently. Awkward. I did that recently with Paul, and I, I felt like I'm always trying to, because we have such limited time together, mm -hmm. we're always like so polite and so kind. And right. You're we like, don't want to fuck while. up the time right. that we have together, right? But sometimes the shit hits the fan. Yes. And I flip out. Yeah. And, or go psycho. Like my friend, my <laughs> other friend says, she's like, oh my God, I went psycho on my boyfriend last night. <laughs> but yeah, I went a little psycho. And it was good because then it kind of like it reestablished. It pushes the reset the, button. Yeah, the like, buzz button. It resets the buzz the, button. It's the buzz button. It's the buzz button. It's the buzz button. button. You go yeah. Yeah, you and know? and I felt like our relationship was much closer, much deeper, mm -hmm. more real. You know, it it definitely felt like it was an important. I think that that's crucial. But you have to look at it that way. You can't oh, yeah. just like, oh, you no, can't you just can't. be causing throwing tables and shit just to, to be interesting. Just to be interesting. And you can't be I mean, you weird. can, but. You can. I mean, but you, with the housewives, like the difference is, is that they are doing this stuff to be interesting. They're doing it for the storyline. Right. Whereas if we do it, we're really doing it to press that reset button. Mm -hmm. Or we're really doing it because we don't have a choice. Right. Or we're doing, and like, that's the thing. We get pushed too we far. We get pushed. And then you've got that catharsis where like it all comes out and then you feel like, ooh, afterwards. Yeah. But it's super necessary you know like you've, you've been building up to this thing and yeah. i think that that's absolutely major but do you have any tips because i was we were talking earlier about how different artistic outputs are easier or more difficult to do when you have like a household responsibilities or kids or whatever so i was thinking of things like writing where you need to focus on mm -hmm. things is kind of hard to do with multiple kids like sometimes when they leave house, this is the house and they go to school, like you're just not in that writing right. thing and you have to do exercises to tell yourself that your time is valuable like mm. you do with your boyfriend where you're like, okay. But then I feel like it almost becomes rote because you're like, oh, I have to do it right now. Yeah. You lost that freedom. Well, I do a lot of things. Like some of the strategies that I do mm. is if, let's say I have a day off, which is kind of rare, but it happens. And, and it'll be happening more and, and more And it's going to happen yes, more it, and more yes, now. Yes, it is. Um, but, you know, the... What I'll do is I'll make deals with myself. I'll I like the deals so, with oneself. So the contract we were yeah, talking about. Yeah, so I'll I just like say, it. I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, you know, you can go, um, you can have your coffee, you can read your book, you can do a little hike, and then after your hike, mm -hmm. you're going to sit down and do this thing, and I make the list. I like it. And then I feel like, or I'll, or I'll do it the opposite way. I'll mm -hmm. say, okay, you're going to do this, and then you're gonna get that done because at this time, then you're gonna have time to go for a hike or right, or right. go see your friend or go shopping or whatever it is that you want to do. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, you're so you either do it depending on the depending on your mood. Like right, if you're right. really being contrary and you feel like yes. like I really can't make myself do this. I feel restless. Yeah. Well, yeah. And then I need to like blow off some steam, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then I'll give myself the reward in advance. Right. So actually I did today, uh, last week, no, this week, I've lost track of time completely. Yeah. That's another thing that happens when you like balance everything. I did a video for my writing platform mm -hmm. about writer's block and that's, you know, and this extends to any kind of creative block. Sure. And I was saying that one of the big issues of when you have a creative block is that it tells your brain that when you're sitting there and you're like, okay, you're going to be doing your creative project yeah. and you can't seem to get mm -hmm. into that zone or I'm meant to be writing something and I can't get into it. Yeah. That's telling our brain that that time that you just took, that time that you just managed to claw uh -huh. away into, you know, sitting down, that time's not valuable because look at you, you're sitting here and you're not you're doing, doing anything. You're doing nothing. You're wasting that time. So that is a waste of time. And yeah. that's a terrible thing to train your brain because your brain will train itself to believe that very quickly. Yeah. And so I looked at Because, I mean, our brains are kind of lazy and they want to conserve oh, they energy. So and, they make, and they make rules. Yeah. 
and they train themselves to think stupid things. Yeah, and like, that's why I don't like, want to do that, so right. I'm going to think that well, out of that well, situation. Well, speaking of our brains, like that's the whole thing with the Real Housewives. Like your brain actually can't tell the difference between television and reality. Like it, in terms oh, of the way yeah. it trains itself. Yeah, that's why like people who watch Friends, they thought the people from Friends were actually were their, their friends. friends. Yeah, oh my god, that's horrible. Up. Horrible. I know. Which is why like, I it makes me even... glad I don't watch that much TV. But you I get know. sucked in. It's kind of like a bad feeling and a good feeling. Anyway, but I get that way about books. I get really involved with the characters yes, sometimes. you do, but so much less so because TV, you're watching yeah. it. Yeah. It's like being there. Your brain can't shut it It can't off. make the, yeah, mm -hmm. the distinction. Can't do it. But, so I thought, instead of sitting there and making your brain think that this is a waste of time. Yeah. Like, do one minute tasks. Anybody yeah. has time for one minute. Even if your kid's screaming in the other room, you can mm -hmm. do one minute tasks. But a one minute like task what? is do the dishes. Right. So not doing the dishes because it has to be a pedestrian task, mm. but that relates to the creative thing that you mm. want to do. Let me give you an example. So I was saying if you're a writer, for example, go through your emails for one minute and find that email from another writer or maybe a magazine mm. that wants to interview you or something, something that you haven't addressed, or like a letter to your editor or to, you know, your agent yeah. that you've been putting off and just boom, shoot off a response. Oh. Or because it'll your, kind of recharge. Yes, it'll it redirect. Resets. It does. It redirects yeah. and it resets. Or you go, you know, into your computer again and you can start cleaning off your desktop because having yeah. that desktop dirty as a writer, well, dirty or messy as a writer is mm. a difficult thing that impedes your writing. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I can or, see that. Or let's say, you know, any artist can, for example, go and have a calendar mm -hmm. and boom, 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 do your social media plan. Right. What thematically am I going to talk about on social media? You can do a whole month in two minutes. Yeah. You know, be like, I'm going to talk about dogs, cats, kids, creativity, cocktails, you know, whatever. Yeah. Boom. Or you can say, you know, I'm going to look at my local calendar of what's going on and I'm going to find events that I can go to that are going to feed my that creativity. Are, yeah. You know, or I can go, you could go on Amazon and look for some yarn. Yeah. You know, like Which one minute or two minutes, but you put yeah. it on a timer. And I think that that is kind of incredible. Or like literally take the time to like, yeah, go online, go on Pinterest and collect some inspirations. Yeah. You know, but you're forwarding your career or you call another creative friend and you're like, I got two minutes. Let's download. What's going on? Yeah. You know, and that also like that outreach. And we were saying that yeah. it's important to reach out to other, you know, creatives. But I think that that can really help to push the reset on the yeah. block that comes from the guilt and from the, the balance not working out that well. You know? Oh, for sure. Yeah. And no, I, I think that's a great idea. Yeah. And, and, and just to sum up that, I think that the contract, we should have not only a contract with ourselves, but mm -hmm. I think have a contract with our spouse, with our partner, with yeah. our kids. I think having a contract with all of those people yeah. is really key because if not, you just don't get the support. And sometimes the support is overrated. Like your kids are never going to want you to no. take time for yourself. <laughs> like they're just no, not. No, they're not. But you they're have not. to. Yeah, but because, you have to. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, I think being a part of being a parent is teaching your kids how they are going to be yes. in the future and mm -hmm. how they have to value their own time. Exactly. And mm -hmm. when they see you do it, then they, you know, kids don't, they don't do what we tell them to do. They do no, what they we do. they do what they observe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, but if they see you taking the time and if they see the strategies that you're using to actually move things mm -hmm. forward and to do things, I think that that's very inspiring for them at the yeah. end of the day. And you I talked so about too. your daughter going, oh my God, my mom's a YouTuber. Yeah. You know? <laughs> She's proud of you. She is she pissed she that is. sometimes you don't have the time for her because you're doing research yeah. or because you can't pick her. You picked her up late at dance because you were filming. Yeah, of course she is. But that's their job. They're pissed. But at I us yeah all the time. All the time. Yeah. But I also do think she she secretly likes that I'm creative because I think it gives her the possibility of also Completely. it shows you yes. know I mean she always talks about kind of. Well, I mean, even when she gets a new dance schedule or there's a performance or something, I think I've told well, you this before. Well, she's a creative. It makes yeah, it totally. easier for you. Yeah, it is. I but mean, she'll, one of each. But I'll I mean, be yeah. like, oh my God, how are we going to do this? And I'll freak out. And she'll be like, we're going to do it like we always do it. Exactly. We, we figure it out. That's, figure how, it out. We, that's she, how we do it. See, she's learned balance because from Because I nice. used to say that to her, like, exactly. oh, we'll figure it out. We always figure it out. Exactly. And so she's learned the balance. And yeah. even if that was just a mantra that you were telling yourself to not go insane. I was telling myself a mantra. <laughs> but we would. We would always figure, figure it out. It, out. it, it exactly. did. I mean, you And know. now you guys are doing a fun project together, which yes. is very creative. Yes, so we're doing the... Yeah. yeah, we're doing, you know, 
because we live in such a small place where I say we're not poor, we're European. Uh huh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's the way I we're live living right now. We've, we've, we've all kind yeah, of downsized. And we're, totally. we're, we're either nouveau pauvre, which yeah. I think is very <laughs> chic, <laughs> or European. That's yeah. what we do. Yes. Yeah. So in, anyway, so we got rid of the couch. And now we're recreating that space. Mm -hmm. So your Shangri -La, because we took, it. we call it Shangri La, <laughs> and we took the bunk bed apart. Mm -hmm. So now I made that into a day bed. Nice. And then now she has a big girl bed because the bottom was a um, a full size bed, and we got rid of all of the like babyish stuff. And yeah, so <laughs> <About> it's <time. laughs> but yeah, but it's yeah. you know, and so we're kind of creating this this space it's like a hangout space yeah it's a creative space it's a creative are, space yeah. and and she's weighing in on it you guys are collaborating yes and she's learning all of these skills and also she's learning that like okay we can do this part of it now we're gonna like kind of yeah i can't jury, afford to do all, all of it exactly, now but yeah. and then so we're strategizing like okay we're gonna do this right. and then when mm -hmm. you get paid from your other job we're gonna do that and then you know we're strategizing and it's yeah. really and then you guys are working on maybe doing a mural together yes and she I wants mean, to do yeah. a big tapestry to mm -hmm. hang in her room and so yeah I mean I think it's it's incorporated in our life but mm -hmm. it's also she's learning skills that you, it's massive skills that yeah. I think that her as a parent like and I like to think that our kids when they're older like having had parents who were juggling things and being a little bit more transparent about the fact yeah. that being a happy homemaker is not really my jam 100% of the time. Like, I do my best, yeah. but it's not, you know, what makes my life go round at all. Yeah. But I think that they are going to learn that they have value as individuals and that they also can fit into a family construct. They yeah. can fit into society. They can fit into, you know, the tribe. That well, we're my mom up, would but... never do something like that with me. You no. know, she would consider that her job. She picks out the, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know... And, and I guess I, the difference is, is that I'm like, well, we both live here and right, we're both yeah. using the space. So let's create the space together. I think that as a creative, it's like, that's the whole thing of being a creative right. is that you actually mold what it, you mold your life Yeah. instead of being, you know, subjected to your life. And yeah. I think that that's the difference where we're kind of, that's what's so stressful about it, is that we're fighting the construct of what it's kind of yeah. supposed to be. But, you know, that's changing. And I think yeah. that it's refreshing that we're able to kind of do <laughs> this drink that. is kicking my butt. <laughs> I feel awesome. like it's like a, um, <laughs> I'm going to call this drink Ambien. Ambien. Oh, God. It's She's like going to be liquid, falling asleep. Liquid like, Ambien. I'm oh like, Oh, my Whoa. God. Well, that's, that's just you coming off of the adrenaline. You think so? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because I came in and I was like, ah! Exactly. Yes. Hello. Yeah. I'm a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you play one on TV, exactly. right? You play one on YouTube. I think, I mean, there's so much more to say. There's about so this much subject. more to say. I mean, there's just so ridiculously much. And I had all these examples of all these artists and creatives. Yeah. And, you know, all, but it's everywhere. I mean, we could probably do 10 episodes. We on could this. do 10 episodes. And but, we, but I guess we what may. we just want you to think about who is your daddy? Who's your daddy? Who's, who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? Who do you have to answer? Yeah. Who do you have to answer to? And. How do you do it? How do you navigate it? Yes. And ultimately, I think it's important to think about, you know, what is it that you want to create? And, yes. And, you and know, how you, can you be creative about achieving that? And finding, yeah. finding out mm -hmm. how to do it because it's, I think it's super important to... Very much so. Very to much your so. happiness. Exactly. And I think that doing that contract with yourself and respecting yourself as a creative yeah. enough to give yourself permission to juggle the things and to give yourself permission to feel that tension that is going to... It, both it stems from creativity yeah. and it's going to feel... that It's going to feed your creativity it more is. as you figure that out. And not being afraid of the conflict. Not being afraid of exactly. saying... Exactly. That's You major. know what? You know, maybe you don't understand this. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. but I need to do it exactly because it, it exactly. feeds my soul mm -hmm. and I'm going to be a more whole person because exactly. I, you have to yeah. kind of fight for your right. And also I think that right this, to party. I, I, yes, you have to fight for your right. But I think that also all these artists who said, Oh, I'm going to forego that whole mm -hmm. family construct. I'm going to forego that, you know, classic bourgeois home, you know, home and dog and this and that, because I want to be, free to create, mm. I think that they're missing some of those really close interpersonal relationships yeah. and tensions. I, I don't think they're mutually you, exclusive. Right. I, think you I don't think do so both. at all. I think that you don't really, if you're a writer and you never had a family relationship, you know, past the, I past can't childhood, imagine that your writing is that interesting. Right. How are you going to be able to, you know, know anything about interpersonal relationships yeah. because you observe them from afar, essentially, you yeah. know, you just never quite get that. And how will you ever know what it is to be kind of a rounded individual if you never grow up? Because that's the other thing. 
as artists, we don't like to grow up, but we yeah. have to. And so there's that tension as I well. Mean, you can still be a YouTuber. I mean, you can grow up and you can still be a YouTuber. Exactly. So, so on that wonderful note, <laughs> thank you guys. Thank Thanks you. for joining us. And we will probably be talking a lot more about other things like this. Yes. We're going to have another fantastic cocktail next week. Thank you to the real yes, housewives. And I will not be crashing us. on adrenaline. <laughs> well, we never know. Maybe she'll. Who yeah, knows? Maybe but, I will. Uh, you never know what life brings you <laughs> next week. But thank you to the real housewives yes, for inspiring thank us, you. and to the Tom Tom Bar in West Hollywood. Yes, thank you for the cocktail Daddy Diablo. We will put up the recipe on. Uh, in our little captions up here yes. and probably down in the description and please subscribe subscribe to us and comment and do all that fun stuff all right until next time until next time cheers, cheers.